Let's talk about your district, first of all. We're going to put up a map here and show where it is down there, much of Miami and some surrounding areas like Coral Gables and things. And we'll also put up some facts. Tell us about your district and what the voters really care about in that district. Well, the district is interesting because it's split between Democrats, independents, and Republicans. And what the voters care about is an assault weapons ban and, of course, the environment. Um, it's life or death for us, sea level rise, flooding. Um, and there are not climate deniers here in South Florida. We care deeply about the environment. We also care about immigration reform because we are a city, a community of, uh, of immigrants. And many of our immigrants are now under temporary protective status. And it's necessary to find a pathway to citizenship to all of the undocumented uh, people that are here in South Florida. We have consensus about that here. So it's not hard to represent the people of South Florida because on the environment, on assault weapons ban, on immigration, on education, and of course on health care, there's lots of consensus in this community. So th those issues sound, if you'll excuse me, uh, very much like democratic issues. Uh, issues that Democrats would really represent. And yet that district, or its predecessor, has been represented by a Republican for 30 years. Is the district itself changing? The district is changing, but its representation, Ileana Ross Layton, was more of a moderate. She won with Democratic votes. She could not have held this district without Democratic votes. So her positions on the issues were quite moderate. Her problem was, and the problem of every South Florida Republican, is that their party didn't respect them. It was not the position of their party. So when I say there's more consensus in South Florida, only the Democrats can move on that consensus, can get something done, because the Republican Party itself has rejected these positions, even when represented by rep Republicans. And yet, if you read the pundits, and I'm sure you, you try to avoid reading the pundits, they say that the district still leans Republican, despite all that. And if, despite the fact that, as I recall, uh, Sen uh, Secretary Cl uh, Clinton won by 20 points. Yes, but Secretary Clinton was not running in a local election. Uh, she was running in a national election against uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is deeply, deeply disliked in this community by both Democrats and Republicans. Of course, there are some Republicans, a core, small core, uh, that believe in him. But when you start taking kids away from their mothers, when you weaken environmental laws, when you absolutely refuse to uh, do anything about assault weapons, and when you start to weaken the health care system. There are 100,000 people here who get the Affordable Care Act just in this district. Uh, we have one of the largest enrollments in the country. So what he's doing is so deeply disrespected and disliked um, that it's a different kind of district. And I believe that I will get Republican votes as well. And as we go around the country, we hear the health care issue come up again and again and again. You know it very well. You were secretary of HHS, after all. And we all want everybody to health care. I think everybody really agrees with that. But the question is, how much money do we spend for it? We'll put out a chart that shows that you know so well the growing percentage of total GDP represented by health care. Is there a responsible way to get health care to the people that need it and bend the cost curve? Because I don't think we can afford to keep going up. We're up 18 percent now of the total GDP. Well, it's been going up over the years a little bit, but it depends on how much growth there is in our, uh, in our economy. But let me put it this way. We can bend the curve, but we can't bend it until we get everybody covered, because those that aren't being covered are, are driving up the costs. In addition to that, we have very, very heavy pharmaceutical costs. In this country, we pay almost twice as much as people do in other parts of uh, the Western world, actually the industrialized world. We pay more than the Canadians do. We pay more than the Europeans do because we absorb um, the costs of having a fragmented health care system. There are things we can do, but the first thing we must do is to get everybody covered. The person that walks into an emergency room that isn't covered that hospital absorbs the cost and shifts it on to those of us that have insurance. That has to stop. And that means we have to get everybody covered. So one, this administration has done the opposite. It has suggested and, and actually is passing cheapy plans, 
which means that people won't be completely covered. It's fighting the insurance cover coverage of pre-existing conditions that will also add to the cost for the rest of us. Okay, one last question about your district, if I may, may ma'am. Uh, you said that there's so many immigrants in your district, but they're overwhelmingly Hispanic, many of them Cuban, but overwhelmingly Hispanic. You are not Hispanic. Does that uh, play as a I, disadvantage to you, having come from Ohio? Does that give your opponent an advantage inherently? Not at all. Um, this, is a, this is a community of immigrants, much like America. Look, if my grandfather had waited a week and gone, left Lebanon with his first cousins, I'd be Cuban today. My grandmother actually was an undocumented immigrant who snuck across uh, the Mexican border. She was Lebanese. This is a community in which all of us have some connection. And in my uh, situation, it's a connection to Latin America and to the Caribbean. But the community adopts people from different backgrounds, uh, no matter where they came from. The community knows me very well and knows that I'm a fighter. So I don't consider it uh, a disadvantage.